Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, the President secured an historic nuclear deal with Iran. Travel to Oklahoma to highlight the administration's work on criminal justice reform in the Connect Home Initiative. Designated three new national monuments. Spoke at the White House Conference on Aging and dropped by the Kid State Dinner. That's July 10th to the 16th for Barack Mole. And the food looks outstanding. Uh, I particularly impressed with the baracamole. <laughs> On Friday, the White House celebrated the next generation of healthy chefs at the Kid State Dinner, where they hosted diminutive dignitaries from all 55 states and U.S. territories. A lot of kids don't understand that food is fuel in a very fundamental way. And sometimes they don't listen to grown-ups, and they don't listen to the First Lady but many of them will listen to you because you're living proof of that reality. The event was topped off with a surprise visit from the veggie eater in chief. I also noticed that uh, there are a lot of good vegetables on the menu, including my favorite vegetable, broccoli. <laughs> Later, the president held a signing ceremony to designate three new national monuments, including one monument of mammoth proportions. On Monday, the White House hosted its Conference on Aging to mark the achievements of 50 years of Medicare and 80 years of Social Security, as well as recent steps to protect Americans' retirement savings by holding financial advisors accountable for acting in their clients' best interest. Three generations ago, we chose to end the era where seniors were left to languish in poverty. Two generations ago, we chose to end an age when Americans in their golden years didn't have the guarantee of health care. This generation, we chose to go even further. Now health care is more affordable and available than ever before. That afternoon, building on his commitment to remedy unfairness in our criminal justice system, the president granted commutations to 46 men and women whose punishments that he deemed did not fit the crime. At 7 a.m. on Tuesday morning, the president announced an historic agreement that would deny the nation of Iran a pathway to building a nuclear weapon. It's an agreement that was the culmination of two years of tough, principled diplomacy. Put simply, no deal means a greater chance of more war in the Middle East. Moreover, we give nothing up by testing whether or not this problem can be solved peacefully. That afternoon, the President discussed the implications of the deal with New York Times columnist Tom Friedman before heading to Philadelphia to keynote the NAACP's annual convention where he addressed the need for reform in our criminal justice system. Our nation's being robbed of men and women who could be workers and taxpayers could be more actively involved in their children's lives, could be role models, could be community leaders. And right now they're locked up for a nonviolent offense. So our criminal justice system isn't as smart as it should be. It's not keeping us as safe as it should be. It is not as fair as it should be. Mass incarceration makes our country worse off, and we need to do something about it. On Wednesday in the East Room, the President convened a news conference to provide more details about the historic nuclear deal with Iran. This deal is our best means of assuring that Iran does not get a nuclear weapon. And from the start, that has been my number one priority, our number one priority. We've got a historic chance to pursue a safer and more secure world, an opportunity that may not come again in our lifetimes. As President and as Commander-in-Chief, uh, I am determined to seize that opportunity. Later, the president traveled to Durant High School in Durant, Oklahoma. There, he met with young people from the Choctaw, Cherokee, and Muscogee nations to hear from them on issues important to the lives of Native youth before speaking to a larger crowd about his Connect Home initiative and how that will contribute to expanding economic opportunity for communities all across the country. So my Department of Housing and Urban Development is going to work with 28 communities from Boston to Durham, from Seattle to Durant, about 200,000 of our most vulnerable children and their families will soon be able to access affordable internet in their home. Good to see you. How are you? Nice to see you. On Thursday, the president went behind bars to the El Reno Federal Correctional Institution, that is, to mark the first time a sitting president has visited a federal prison. 1988. While there, the president heard firsthand from guards and prisoners about the realities of our prison system. We 
you've got to be able to distinguish between dangerous individuals who need to be incapacitated and incarcerated versus young people who are in an environment in which uh, they are adapting, but if given different opportunities, a different vision of life, uh, could be thriving the way we are. That's what strikes me. There but for the grace of God. Uh, and, and, and that, I think, is something that we all have to think about. So stay engaged with us online and remember, you can find out more information about any of these topics and see complete videos of these events at whitehouse.gov. Thanks so much for checking out this edition of your West Wing Week. So I'm proud of you and uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful dinner. And I'm, uh, I'm gonna come around and shake hands with people, uh, but I can't take selfies oh, yeah. with everybody because I've actually got uh, just a few other things to do. <laughs> so that would end up taking too long, all right? But you can take pictures while I'm shaking hands. I just can't, like, pose. <laughs> <laughs>